Hey there, today we're going to learn how to do a paired samples, also known as matched samples, t-test and stata. So in order to do that, let's go ahead and pull up a data set that can help us. And stata has this pretty handy built-in data set on fuel. And it looks like we are measuring miles per gallon without fuel treatment and with fuel treatment for the same car. Now, if we look at the data set here, um, Cars are not labeled, but we, we can infer that these are all pairs, right? So whatever car got 20 miles an hour here on the first treatment, miles per gallon got 24 here, and then this car that got 24 got 27 here. And our hypothesis might be a good place to start is just by issuing the command, and then we can kind of work backwards and explain what the results mean and how they're relevant to, to this structure. We're going to say t-test mpg2 equals mpg1. And note that you could have switched the order of that. It wouldn't have made a difference. And the first thing to really look at here um, before we get into sort of the tails um, of that interpretation is just mean difference different from zero. So in stata, just by convention, they don't have the not equal sign. So this just means not equal. So And here we see it's statistically significant. Well, what does that mean? Let's go back and look at our table. Looks like uh, cars that had the treatment um, here with fuel treatment, as you can see for MPG2, had a mean miles per gallon of 22.75. And then the same cars without fuel treatment had an MPG of 21. So it looks like 1.75 MPG difference between, you know, between the treatments. And we're going to actually look at all of these p-values and kind of talk you through them because they can actually be the most difficult part of a t-test for, for students to understand. First, we want to just start out by saying, is it different? Yes. Now, is MPG2 greater than MPG1? There's a slightly smaller p-value for that. And then if we're asking, is MPG2 less than MPG1? Notice that there's yet again a different p-value for that. So why is this important? Um, it's important because when we do a paired samples t-test, we begin with a hypothesis structure. And for example, our null hypothesis might be that the two fuel treatments are equal in terms of their effect on miles per gallon. And then the alternative hypothesis would be that they are not equal. So if that were the hypothesis structure, then in reporting the results, this is the p-value that we would have to report. However, let's say that our hypothesis, our null hypothesis, is that without fuel treatment, cars are either less than or equal to um, the fuel treatment that they then receive. And then the alternative would be that when they get the fuel treatment, MPG is actually greater. Well, in that case, this is the p-value that you would report. So that just takes a little bit of you know, thinking um, in terms of your hypothesis structure, which p-value you're reporting. But the great news is that Stata gives you just by default um, all three p-values. So any possible hypothesis structure that you have for your paired samples t-test can you know, easily be accompanied by the right p-value. Now let's use scipplot and then just do mpg2, mpg1 so that we can visualize some of what's going on. And after that, we'll do um, a box plot also to show you what that actually looks like. Um, and why is this handy? Because typically when we are running, um, when we are running a paired samples t-test, we want to be able to also show what's going on here, right? So notice that without fuel treatment, here's sort of the mean and the 95% confidence interval. And with fuel treatment, here's the mean and the confidence interval. So this kind of gives us a pretty good visual idea that the fuel treatment is pretty handy in increasing the miles per gallon of these same cars, um, you know, once you get them on the road. And if you wanted, you could actually do a box plot too, just say graph box, and then repeat the variable names. And then Stata would actually do the same thing for you here. And what would be handy on the graph, uh, the box plot, is that if there are any outliers, um, you could also, you know, graph them here. Let's say that one of the cars, you know, responded really, really well to the fuel treatment in comparison to not having the fuel treatment. Stata would show you that as well. 